Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Sam. No, that's Sam. I'm Phil. <laughs> We're Barbados and Barbados as a team. And uh, we've got Russia versus NATO military power comparison 2022. It's pretty recent. Yeah, and uh, we're doing this because it's relevant to what's going on in the world today. Yeah. Obviously, we know that you know NATO and Russia and you know the world itself has Some been confliction there. Yeah, there. I almost yeah, well, beat up my mic. A great sound effect there. Yeah. <laughs> that's hopefully what doesn't happen to the world. And uh, so, you know, I, we've been getting into more military-based videos recently, done some history. Yep. We've done um, the Fat Electrician video of the most gangster Marine of all time. And so we thought we'd check out this one. If there's other military uh, power comparison videos that you want us to check out, please yeah. let us know. We've done uh, five reasons not to mess with the USA. Yeah, that was cool. Maybe there's a USA versus China or something, other, one of those ones that you want us to check out. Let us know. Also, make sure you're subscribed guys 85 percent of our viewers are not subscribed and they keep coming back and checking our channel if that's you you need to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything from us going forward yeah. what do we drop sam we do music comedy sports history two videos every day so we got lots for you to choose from so you don't want to miss out yeah so this is just one type of the content that we do anyways i'm excited to check this out see where russia falls i think russia is a uh, pretty powerful military and i don't know about the Na about nato i mean obviously you've got the u.s but other than the u.s if we were to remove them i'd be curious so maybe we'll get some comparisons in that respect but no idea let's find out russia versus nato pretty crazy that russia only has 145 million people in it yeah that's wild it's huge huge landmass. only has you know compare that to india and um china yeah you have billions of people yeah you'd and expect russia to have more people yeah russia has like five percent of the population comparatively to india or china right yeah um that's pretty wild i never knew that so interesting deck ready to go quite a vast difference there that's pretty wild yeah. defense budget i can only imagine 1.3 trillion that's wild so i mean that's obviously an important factor in the comparison here right when you're talking about available servicemen versus the budget especially now as we go to technological advancements yeah with you know the military industrial complexes i mean you might not need as much manpower if you have other devices drones, that are right yeah. you know um if your budget is huge yeah and clearly we're looking at you know 10 times 
the amount here between Russia and NATO, whereas, you know, when we looked at the population differences, was not that vast, right? Yeah, well, I think the thing that's, you know, it's hard to do a comparison because NATO is like how many countries now? Like a lot. Mm -hmm. So you're comparing like 20 countries. The economies to one, of all of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know. Yeah, it makes sense. That's a lot closer. I don't know what an APC, I guess. So stuff like this, right? Like the tanks and like the like the resources that they have. Like I was just saying, in NATO, you have like 20 countries versus, I don't know how many actually, but on the map, it'll take a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And then in Russia, it's one country. So it's like they're almost 50-50 or less. Like this is, they have more than, they have what, like 60% of 70% mm -hmm. of what... A NATO has, but it's one country. So yeah. while a lot of this, it's like, yeah, obviously Russia's lagging behind by a lot. It's like when you put it into perspective of like one country versus, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I'd be more curious to see Russia versus USA as a comparison, I think. Yeah, that's definitely a comparison. Maybe we can check out. Yeah. And what you're highlighting is valid in that, you know, 12,000 to 17,000, you know, it's much, much closer than the 10 to one in terms of the military budget that mm -hmm. they have, right? So uh, it's definitely pretty eye-opening to see the comparison of available. Yeah. I mean, this is just tanks, right? We're talking about uh, land vehicles here, right? So we'll get, probably get into planes, you know, uh, what the... Ships, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, naval capacity is. So it'll be interesting to see those comparisons. But I think the biggest contributor, as we said, could be the ability to spend on unmanned weapons. Yeah, like the drones and stuff that you yeah. said. Yeah. All factors considered, it is pretty wild because I'm, I'm sure NATO is including U.S. here, right? Yeah, they so are. So if you remove the U.S., like NATO is nothing, basically. Yeah, like right? from what I saw on that map quickly, it was just a quick thing. It was Canada, U.S., yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Iceland, and then a bunch of European yeah, countries. Yeah. And that's what that's what NATO is. But I, I'm just saying, like, it's really remarkable, you know, to think that in these numbers, the U.S. is included. So if you remove that from the metric of NATO, it'd be night and day of Russia versus NATO, right? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously Russia knows that, right? NATO is talking about expansion and bringing in other countries and everything else. But meanwhile, it's really like the U.S. plus NATO. I don't know. Nobody US else in NATO. It's, uh, U.S. is Batman and the rest of them are Robin. <laughs> Not even Robin. <laughs> They're like all of them collectively are they're like Commissioner Gordon, <laughs> <laughs> right? But um, in in respect as well, what we're saying because we mentioned the population of Russia and we were mm -hmm. blown away by that how limited their population is. So relative to their population, yeah, they have a lot of resources. How much their military presence is is there? It's pretty wild. I mean, Russia's not to be messed around with. I think people really, you know, you hear the talking. Um, talking points the narrative on mainstream media about you know their capabilities and how you know weak the Ru russian army is or you know how they're failing in ukraine and all this other stuff it's like clearly we're not getting the full spectrum of what their capabilities are yeah. right and people I, that's why i never really understood it's like i had heard about russia's abilities with their military side of things 
and I was like, it really doesn't seem accurate to the way you guys are describing Russia here. Um, you know, so this is why the Cold War was was ongoing right for so long, and why people were on edge about it because of Russia's capabilities, right? Yeah. So I think it, we've really underestimated how close we are to a really severe conflict with Russia here. Like, it's something I, in my opinion, we should be trying to resolve this immediately. Yeah, That's and I feel like, you know, twist. based off these numbers, if, let's just say, Russia and China were to, like, align with each other or mm -hmm, something, exactly. like, think of how... That would change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyways, we'll keep going. to the chopper. So uh, I would say getting into the air operations seems like there's a little more of a disparity yeah. in between Russia and NATO. Um, Who would be the second most powerful military in NATO next to the US? Britain? Or I guess England? Um, I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. That was like a wild guess on my part. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it seems that the air superiority is a little more vast. And I assume that's probably due to the U.S., um, their capabilities. But I assume we're about to get to the naval side of Ships. things. Which I don't think Russia has a very strong navy. So you know, that makes sense as well because they have so much land mass that so they would need more you know, land-based vehicles yeah. and stuff like that, right? Less water and... I mean, yeah. I mean, at that said, though, they do have a lot of a large body of water surrounding them, right? So, anyways, let's find out. We're going to find out. out. <laughs> what is an attack helicopter? Pew, 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 pew.
was interested to see the subs because you can now fly, launch nuclear weapons, I think, from a lot of subs. I don't know if that's going to be a different category or not. Yeah. But that's, that's surprising. I mean, you know, only two times the amount NATO has. I mean, I guess a lot of the European countries have no use for them as well because they're not even on water. Yeah, fair. Right? They're more like inland countries. Um, I was surprised to see that the, I don't know, like the Corvettes, I guess it's a type of ship. It's the only thing Russia has more of. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, why do U.S. have way more of that than anything? Else? Yeah, I definitely don't know the specifics on a lot of these uh, subheadings here that we're getting into. You know, between obviously of air support and naval support and land, but I don't know the finer details. Like you said, the difference between the hel- helicopters and <laughs> and difference between some of these ships and stuff like that. I, I'm not really uh, clear on what the differences are, but. Um, I was just surprised, like I said, to see the submarines because I feel like that's an important part of warfare nowadays. Yeah, and for sure. And Russia clearly has invested a vast amount of resources to assuring up that part of their military, right? Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that was the Russia versus NATO military power comparison. Anything that stood out to you? I, like I said, I just think it's it's really cool to see how Russia, I mean, obviously, as these two comparisons are lagging behind in pretty much everything, but some of it, like I said, was like a two to one ratio. So for it being one country with, like you said, the subset of the population being so small compared to the population of NATO, I feel like they're doing pretty good for themselves for just being one country. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess it depends what your definition of pretty good is, because <laughs> the rest of the country, I think, is not in the greatest of shape and economically. No, so I meant can, like based I, off yeah, what we I, just watched. I understand. I, I'm just getting to the point of saying that they are spending clearly a lot of money on their military. Yes. And that means that there's less resources to go yeah, around for everybody fair. else. Um, but that's not just them it's you know we could say the same thing for the u.s obviously we know mm-hmm. military spending is through the roof yep. there so um but i i agree that i was surprised to see how strong their military capabilities are but also not entirely surprised as i said earlier in the video because i had heard about russia's military um i just i think thought there was a greater difference between where the u.s was and where the where russia was you know in terms of their capabilities but maybe it just wasn't highlighted in this video in the best way, like I said, from technological advancements, from the capabilities of each of these things, because maybe, you know, you have submarines between both these country or both these um, comparisons between NATO and Russia, maybe the capabilities of US with their submarines are vastly beyond. Like they're more new with better technology. Exactly, right? So we don't know if, you know, Russia's including vehicles and um, planes and stuff from 50 years ago in their, their count. So, yeah, it's um, also think- interesting because like when we did the World War, I think it was World War One videos, they were talking a lot about the development of like, you know, how much Germany, I know this isn't about Germany, but like Germany was using their naval ships versus Britain and how like Britain was like really struggling with that and the, like, the US had to come in. So I'd be curious to know like the percentage of how much of these resources come from what portions of NATO. Mm-hmm. Obviously we know the bulk is from the US, but outside of that, like how much of that is the US and how much of it is somewhere else? Because if most of that is from the US, then it's like, okay, well like Russia and the US, like I would really want to see how evenly matched they are and then mm-hmm. also i would be interested to see how the, the nato and or us um versus china would be mm. so there's there are two next videos like that sam has laid out so you can let us know if there are comparison videos that we should check out related to because i just feel like that would put it more in per- perspective you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah well, but we had to start somewhere yeah no for sure this was this interesting open pandora's box now of i didn't even questions. know that there was a difference between regular helicopters and like attack helicopters like there you go and uh i like i said it was interesting for me to to know that and and, and on your point i would say if i had to guess i would say 90 percent at least of nato's capabilities come from the u.s US. yeah so um like you're alluding to though that means it's basically you know u.s versus russia Mm -hmm. and then you add a few other countries in there like china 
and uh, India. And I think those are like some of the most powerful militaries in the world. And, you know, it can tip the balances of power quite quickly. So anyways, guys, let us know if you enjoyed this by hitting the comments and make sure you're subscribed if you want to see stuff in the future. Hit the like button like Sam was saying uh, and come back tomorrow. Check out our two next videos. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then.